But now we're all back together in stream one. Next up is uh, two really big stars in the diabetes community. It's uh, Diabetes UK's uh, Senior Policy Officer, Liz Perodin, and frequent feature at previous Type 1 and Tech conferences. So if you've been to one before, you'll know who she is um, and a relentless force in the tech policy world. But what even is policy? Well, Liz is joined by the enigma that is Professor Partha Carr, who I sort of chalk up as one of the real advocates within the NHS. He's the National Specialty Advisor in Diabetes at NHS England, and they talk about what the guidelines mean and how they should work for you and what does the near future look like. Pens and notebooks at the ready, because this one is going to be one that you want to remember. So hi everybody, uh, really great to be here again at Type 1 and Tech Conference 2022. Um, I'm Liz Peridin, I'm Senior Policy Officer at Diabetes UK and Policy Lead for all things technology and digital health. Um, really excited that in a short while we'll be joined by Professor Partha Carr, National Speciality Advisor for Diabetes in the NHS England Diabetes Programme and to put it lightly, a bit of a legend in the type one diabetes technology space. So really excited to have, have him with us today. And this session is all about policy. Um, policy is a word that we all hear banded around in the health and certainly in the technology space a lot, but what does it really mean? And I can say from personal experience that often the word policy is used uh, as a reason for not giving access to technology. And that's something I know that we at Diabetes UK and Partha included are kind of hoping to change. Um, what I'll do today is talk to you a bit about the national policy landscape, what each UK nation is saying at a national level about policy and what policy should look like. And then we're going to open up and have a conversation with Partha about policy work and diabetes technology policy more generally. Um, and hopefully that will provide a bit of insight for you folk about, about the process and, and what it all means. Um, so to kick things off, I, I did a bit of Googling about a kind of definition of health policy. Um, and there were a fairly wide range of different uh, definitions available, but I thought this one from Columbia University in America put it quite well. So public health policy is defined as the laws, regulations, actions and decisions implemented within society in order to promote wellness and ensure that specific health goals are met. Um, obviously, in, in our context, specific health goals are all around diabetes, type 1 diabetes and, and technology. Um, I think it's important to note here that although this just sort of explains what policy, health policy is at a kind of global level, it's important to note that there are a lot of different players involved in the policy space. So you have the likes of myself and colleagues at Diabetes UK and, uh, um, and uh, with our friends JDRF, developing policy, looking at policy and influencing policy change. Um, at a very local level, we have clinical kind of leaders driving forward policy change in the diabetes in the diabetes realm. We have um, NHS England, so the likes of Partha driving forward policy change at that national level. And then we have in 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 most UK nations um, kind of arm's length bodies, so um, so groups that sort of define and dictate what direction policy should go in. And these groups all work together to implement, work on, define what good type one technology policy should look like. So what national policy says, and here I'm focusing largely on these kind of arm's length groups um, that kind of develop policy recommendations around type one diabetes technology. So starting off with England and Wales, in England and Wales, we have the National Institute of Health and Care Excellence, NICE, as it's otherwise referred to. And many of you will be aware that earlier this year, NICE recommended um, flash and continuous glucose monitoring CGM use for all people living with type 1 diabetes, regardless of their circumstance. Uh, a few years ago, NICE also recommended CGM use during type 1 diabetes pregnancies, and since that recommendation was published, 
Um, we've seen massive uh, progress in that space with the majority of type 1 diabetes pregnancies being offered, at least being offered access to CGM. Um, we also have recommendations from NICE around insulin pump use. I think sometimes these, the, these recommendations can be seen as a little less tangible, um, but they are kind of used to decide, at least in most cases, who should qualify for access to an insulin pump. Um, the final bullet point here, no national criteria for hybrid closed loop technology at the moment in England and Wales, but we are expecting recommendations from NICE in the coming months on just this subject. Moving on to Scotland. So the Scottish Health Technology Group and SIGN, they are the arm's length bodies uh, that kind of dictate that, that national policy recommendation. Um, they, you can see here what they, what they recommend for insulin pumps. Um, a few years ago, they recommended FLASH for all people with diabetes who use insulin intensive therapy. So it tends to be understood as at least two or three, four or more injections a day um, or an insulin pump. Um, at the moment, there are no national guidelines specifically on CGM use in Scotland, but we are kind of pushing for, 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 for those, to be, those to be developed. But I think really excitingly, this last bullet point here is that earlier this, earlier this year, the Scottish Health Technology Group recommended hybrid closed loop technology for a wide range of people living with type 1 diabetes. So those who are struggling with their glycemic control under their current care plan, people at risk of severe hypos or have hypo unawareness. But I think really interestingly, this bottom kind of point here, people who are experiencing diabetes distress, which affects their ability to self-manage their condition or their quality of life. That's a really significant recommendation from the Scottish Health Technology Group. And we at Diabetes UK and Diabetes Scotland were really thrilled to see that being published. And perhaps even more excitingly, we know that work is going on now in Scotland to um, deliver on, to implement these, these, these recommendations at a more local level. Finally, uh, Northern Ireland. So FLASH is currently available to most adults um, with type 1 diabetes in Northern Ireland. They've been quite kind of ahead of the game on, some, on many levels in, in that particular space. Um, the Diabetes Network, so this is the group that defines that kind of national policy direction for diabetes technologies, um, recommends insulin pump use for, for a wide range of people and actually really excitingly um, a new pathway has been developed to put that into practice. Um, you'll see here the third bullet point down, um, the pumps are also recommended to be at least considered for pregnancy or pre-pregnancy. Um, I think that, that's, a, that's a difference from the other UK nations and a kind of interesting one to see, to see recommended in, in Northern Ireland. Um, currently no guidance specifically on CGM access um, in Northern Ireland, but the Diabetes Network is in the process of working on that to bring, hopefully, at a very minimum themselves in line with what NICE has been recommending in England. And again, no national guidance on hybrid closed loop systems, but we are hopeful that when NICE publishes their recommendations, hopefully early next year, we'll see the um, Diabetes Network in Northern Ireland kind of following suit. So. That is an incredibly top line kind of broad brush overview of uh, what the policy at a very kind of big national level looks like across the UK. Um, and I think what I hope I've highlighted here is that there are differences and there's variation and it looks different in each UK nation for various different reasons. But what I want to do now is invite Partha Carr onto the call. Um, Partha, as many of you know, is uh, yeah, a huge kind of legend in the type 1 diabetes space, uh, national speciality advisor uh, for type 1 diabetes in the NHS England Diabetes Programme. Um, and Partha played a huge role in driving forward the kind of much wider adoption of flash glucose monitoring that you've seen um, you've seen in, in recent years and is a huge ally and, and voice for people living with diabetes. So I will stop sharing and say, Partha, welcome. Thank you, Liz. You called me a legend twice, so <laughs> that definitely involves two drinks and not just one. <laughs> so thank you. Um, so Partha, I'm going to throw some questions about policy at you now. Um, the first one being, I guess, you know, in your role in NHS England, what does policy making look like for you? What does that mean in, in the day to day? So I think it's a very, it's a very interesting space in its own right, because I think 
you've got competing interests across the board, um, you know, diabetes, COPD, heart failure, all of that. And you've got a finite pot of money. So it's a question of what you pick as your target you want to do. How much is the evidence base behind it and what you can push through? And it's a mixture of that because, you know, we, we know that we, you know, a couple of days ago, we had the Flash UK study, which Diabetes UK funded, which has come out. And that's a randomized control study, which is great. But we have managed to get Flash through without that. OK, so I think there is a bit of a mixture as to how we go forward in policy. So I think policy is mostly about, I think it's about realizing you can't do everything. And I think we need to be very clear. And I think in the past and also in other areas, I suspect we're not very open with the diabetes community about saying this is not what we can do to begin with, but we have a vision about slowly getting it through. And I think policy is mostly about being honest about what you can, don't, don't raise false expectations is what I always say. And we've had this, you know, when we talked about Libra, we said, about, oh, we'll get it to 20% and all the people said, well, why just Libra? Why not Dexcom? You know, why just 20%? And I've always said, you've got to wait. You know, there's a way of doing it because you buy too big a piece of the pie you will end up doing nothing. So I think that's policies about having that tactical side of things and being honest as to where you're going with it. Great, thank you. And and thinking about, you know, I, I guess sort of certain specific policy uh, wins really in the last few years. So I guess the flash uh, example is, is a really, really good one. When you've been working towards those policy changes, what would you say are the kind of big challenges? What are the key issues you face when getting to that point? So it's the usual innovation curve that you face. You know, you have the four groups of people, you know, you write on it, give us the data. Okay, fine, I'll follow because everybody else is and no, I won't do it. So you always have that four groups of people, which is a big challenge. And that challenge, and I think there's a there's always a you know myth that it's all oh, it's only the commissioners, those evil people sitting in the boards and who's not giving allowing. It's not true. I mean, it, it, don't forget that the challenge also comes from patients because they would say, we don't agree with the device, you're not giving us more device, quite rightly too, you know, because they would say, we don't have the choice, you're pushing one. Uh, clinicians uh, are also a big challenge. They all fall in those four groups, but for differing reasons. And we have had challenges from clinicians speaking, saying that we don't agree with the policy of going with Libra, you should go with Dexcom first. And obviously there were many reasons why we chose that approach. You will also have uh, patient charities also finding it uncomfortable. So you will have challenges all across the way and obviously money and all that comes through. And I don't see that as a negative thing because it's good to have the challenge back because you try and have that sort of measure of uh, are, we, are we going the right way with this or not? So th those would be the main challenge. But, uh, but I think it's important that the challenges come from those four groups I described exist everywhere. And they are mm -hmm. clinicians, academics, professionals and commissioners uh, and that's fine that's how it goes so yeah 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 and so thinking about you know you you get this kind of policy win so let's talk let's 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 talk about the <clears throat> nice recommending <throat> flash and yeah. cgm yeah. Uh, earlier this year for everyone with type one mm -hmm. what you know you kind of have this recommendation from nice but what comes next what happens after that how do you get that from nice all the way down to my local yeah. yeah so it depends as to how you look at it uh, i think you know we you know by the time nice had landed it in march we were already at i think 55 percent of the country was on flash and type one so then it becomes okay well how do we get it up to 80 85 which i think would be saturation and then offering the choice that's the important bit and i think you were saying the flash and cgm comes in play and we was, and i think then it's about because th there are squillions of nice guidelines which are not implemented right? What the, the key is, how do you implement it? How do you offer the choice? So we're in a position of saying, all right, we now want to offer a CGM and we've got two or three other CGMs at market price with flash. And then the question becomes, well, if you're already offering flash, why can't you give CGM? That makes no sense. So we push systems to go like, but well, we're giving you the price parity that you ask for money scarce and all that. Then comes the other bit about, there is also the choice of types of CGM in the sense of what about if I want to share my thing you know and then you're talking about more higher up, upgraded cgms and that's the piece of work we still have to do people then also say about what about things that i want to loop with the pan with a pump okay that piece of work is coming next so i think there's a strategy as to how we go but if you take a step back nice have said everybody with type 1 diabetes should have access to a flash or a cgm and that's the strap line which we absolutely need to do so we're we're we not very far off from giving access to there are obviously pockets of variation so then it's about tackling the variation uh which is what we're doing at the present moment so i think it's about how do you get and 
and you and I know this, we have spoken about this, you know, we've had a pump guidelines since 2008, 14 years later, we're still going, oh, why is it not happening? Uh, and I think that we know why it's not happening. It's not a money thing, uh, necessarily. Uh, but I think that's the thing, is that how do you then make sure that most people get it? And I think that that's the role, I would say, that's the role about empowering patients, give them the faith and the strength to say, no, no, go and ask, go and ask. And I think that's probably my present role, which is what I do everywhere. I go, yeah, yeah, just reference me. It's fine. You're not asking for something that's not, you know, outlandish. You're asking for something that's in the nice guidelines. You know, you just ask them for something which is part of your care. So I think that's the way to progress. Absolutely. You know, you're asking for something that is best practice. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you, yeah. you have a right to do that. I mean, I'm going to actually say, change that around. This is not, and I think this is the word we need to change. I don't think it's best practice. It's standard practice. And I think that's what we need to say, because once you say the word best practice, there's a lot of people who go like, yes, but you know, the NHS is struggling, so we can't do what's best. And you go like, okay. And people then have that. So they, then you have that degree of collusion going on, going like, yes, we're really struggling. And okay, maybe, maybe I should just go and prick my fingers. No, it's standard practice. Yeah. This is basic bottom line for type one diabetes care. You get it. Best practice is everybody getting a closed loop. Right. Yeah. That's best practice. And yeah, we'll see what the future holds. But this is standard. So I, I encourage everybody. No, no, no. This is standard practice. This is not best practice. So I think that changes the narrative and the conversation. Going like, this is what I should get. Just like I get glucose trips, just like I get in my insulin. Why am I not getting this? That changes the dialogue, I think, from a from a psychology point of view as well. So, yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. That's a really, really helpful way of, of framing it. This is standard practice. And so that's why it should yeah. be happening. Yeah. Um. So a, a final question for you, Partha, um, and you kind of alluded to it already when you mentioned mm. closed loop technology, mm. but, yeah. you know, what's next? What's on the horizon? What's next for you? Where, 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 where are you taking the diabetes technology policy world next? Um, so I personally, uh, you know, there will obviously be people after me. I mean, my journey will come to at some point in the end. But I think... Um, so I think the, 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 the future I see, that if you've got type 1 diabetes, there should really be a two-step process, which is you're diagnosed, you're given education, everything, and you're given a flash or a CGM of your choice, a diagnosis. And if that's not enough for you with MDI and everything connected pens, and I think it's important to have that in the mix, that you have, if you have MDI, you've got connected pens, you've got a CGM flash. That's your standard to begin with. And if that's not working for you, you should really have access to the next best thing, which is a closed loop. And that, that's it. There should only be two steps. Uh, you know, we have the future forever of the lure of the cure. So that makes sense. But keeping that 10 year plan and 10 year promise aside, th those are the two steps for type one diabetes. And that's the that's what I would expect people who follow me in the role to implement. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the vision at the present moment is that we have asked the question to NICE. Where do you think closed loop fits based on all the evidence that is out there? My personal view is. It should be available, you know, okay, we shall see what cuts people bring in and, you know, what, what is cost effective. And I think the challenge then becomes goes back to industry, because if NICE says, look, it's not cost effective at this price, my question to industry is, well, would you drop your price to make it cost effective so that more people get it? Which is what we have done with Abbott and Dexcom and everybody. So everybody else should follow that template. It shouldn't be, the answer shouldn't be, it's not cost effective because the price is so high. The answer should be, yes, it's cost effective at this price. And then to go to industry, so do you want to match the price? Can you match the price? Because mm. people need it. The science says you need it. What's stopping it from happening is not the evidence. It's the cost and what the NHS can bear. And I think that's the tactical way to do it. Mm. So uh, my, my vision is that we'll see what NICE says. We'll find out their first draft at the end of November. Obviously, we'll have time to sort of push back. And I think... Then there comes the challenge of implementation uh, of how you get it. Uh, I do not for a minute believe that every single type 1 diabetes center in this country will be in a position to do closed loops. This is not flash or CGM setup. This is going to be trained people to do it. So I think people need to look at that as well as how they are delivering their services and whether we do it in certain centers rather than everywhere. And we know that from the pump data, right? There are centers which don't offer pumps. So if you're not offering pumps in 2022, you really shouldn't be doing closed loops. I mean, you need to really think as to whether you should do type 1 diabetes care. So those would be the vision forward going forward. We'll see where we go with it. Exciting. A, a great challenge to industry there. Absolutely. Um, and 
yeah, the implementation step is certainly one that I know we at Diabetes UK and colleagues from JDRF and Diabetes Technology Network will be keen to work with you on to kind of make sure we're we're supporting that journey as much as as much as humanly possible. Um, Partha, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, I okay. hope for everyone watching, it's been a kind of helpful insight into what policy is and what it actually means uh, in the day to day. Yeah. Can I just say something before you finish? Because that I can also just say that, you know, a big kudos to everything that you guys do as an organization, you're fantastic partners. And I, and I don't say that lightly, is that we need that partnership model, which lots of other specialties can learn from as to the, the reason for the success is the partnership we have. And also kudos to you for all that you've done, Liz, to help sort of raise the profile and, you know, talk about it. And we've had conversations. So, you know, my sort of respect and thank you to you for that as well. Thank you, Partha, and thanks everyone for watching. I will close the session there. Thanks very much. Would you look at that? We've caught up with our timings, back on track, just what we needed. Um, uh, but isn't it great to see uh, Partha back on our screens? A huge thank you to uh, Liz and Partha for that. We are all definitely uh, on the same page, wanting everyone with type 1 to have access to the tech that makes our lives easier. I know I spoke to Partha recently and, you know, they, they're making waves uh, in terms of tech access, especially.